But before we move on to that, let's understand this whole concept of human spirit. I will make you do it and you will go back home with some very powerful actionables. Before we can understand how do we make the best of 2016, let's understand the whole concept of the human spirit. What is human spirit all about? What is this being called a human being all about? That we are born. One of the principles in my principal cards, if you have read, it says, it is not being born as a human being, but living life as a human being that we make sense, that we can make a difference. So what is this concept of being a human being? This human being concept is all about understanding that there is limitless potential within each one of us. Limitless. And cherishing the spirit of human being or cherishing the human spirit is all about understanding that this potential ko kaise maximize karu? How do I make my th things better around me? Cherishing the human spirit is all about coming with new ideas, new thought processes, coming with, with things which, are, which were never there in the world, creating things which were never a part of this world. This is all about human spirit, which animals don't do. No other creation in the world does except human beings. Animals cannot make this world a better place. Plants, trees cannot make this world a better place. They have their own structured pathway and they will live within that framework. It's only human beings who can make their own framework and that is called the human spirit. And if you can understand this human spirit and ask ourselves, as per this human spirit, am I evolving? Am I doing something bigger? Am I making a difference to this world? To make it a bit more simpler for you, See, if you talk about a horse, a horse can pull a cart. And maybe the horse owner, his family depends on that cart pulling. So a horse can feed a family of two, three. A bullock is there and the bullock, bullock cart is pulled by the bullock. It can feed that farmer's family. Even an animal can take care of a few people. What about you and me? We are getting educated, we are becoming doctors, we are becoming engineers, we are becoming scientists, we are thinking about starting a business. If all that which we are starting and all that which we are doing is all about me and my family, me and my four people, me and my few relatives, it is not the human spirit. Human spirit is bigger, going beyond. It's bigger, bigger than me, 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 I, myself. It's much bigger than that. And that's what I'm talking about today. Can we all go beyond? Can we actually cherish? Can we actually relish this, this spirit called the human spirit? And this spirit is all about understanding there is limitless potential. Limitless. If you were to go back into history and see, history is a proof of people, ordinary people like you and me, who were born just the way you were born, dependent, lying in one place, not being able to move, maybe urinating in the same place. You know, depending on somebody to lift and clean them up. History is a proof of such people like you and me who were there. And they depended on people to teach them how to ride. By, they were struggling just like us to hold a pencil, struggling to walk just like we were struggling. But then they went on. And somewhere over a period of time, maybe when they were in their 20s, maybe in their 30s, kind of somewhere in them, in, in their living their life, a realization hua, ek man mein baat aai, yeah, I can do a lot more. And then they went on to become standpoints for humanity. They went on to become people whom we talk about. They are examples of what it is to have a limitless potential. Just a few days back, and I'm sure you all must have also gone through this, in one of the WhatsApp groups which I am a part of, one of the Christians posted a video. And this video was of a, of a person who was giving a talk at Inc. Corporation, one of the uh, series which people do about extraordinary people in India and there this man was there, young man, maybe around in his late 20s and uh, he stood there facing almost around a hall full of 3000 odd you know, entrepreneurs and, and people from that arena. The difference was that this boy or this young man who was standing there, he was sharing his life story and the story was that he was born in a very poor family, very poor means a family which had just 20 or thousand rupees a year to survive on a farm from a farming background and he says when people come to know that the son is being born where I was a son I was born in my family everybody must have been excited but my family was in for a shock because I was born and I was born without eyes 
And there he was in the family where everybody told his parents, it's okay to give him, give up on him. It's okay if somewhere he is not alive, don't keep him with you. Already you are poor. You already have your own challenges in life and you here you have another challenge in front of you, a child with no eyes. And he says, my parents did not give up on me. They stood up for me and I went on. I was five years of age and I was there in the farm with my father and I would not see anything in front, I would not see anything behind, right, left, right and would walk in the muddy waters and then my father realized that, can I send him to a school? And he says, I was sent to a school and I was made to sit in the last bench. And sitting as the last bencher, everybody made fun of me because I couldn't see, I couldn't read, I couldn't understand what was happening. Two years of my life went like this, when people realized I need to be sent to a special school. And then he was sent to a special school. And their life changed for him. He studied, he learned, he understood. And he went on to give his examinations of 10th with the highest possible marks. And out of 10th, when people again met him and he said, if they asked him, what will you do? What do you want to do? He says, I will take up science. And they all said, what's the point of taking science? Because no college will allow you to take up science. Science is not for blind people. Now anybody would have sulked, anybody would have said, it's okay now, what is there for blind people? They said, arts is there, pick up arts. He did not stop there. He said, if why science is not there? And they said, how will you come to know what's happening in the experiment? How will you know what color it is? Will the, that, that liquid turn blue or pink? How would you come to know? He says, I'm sure, apart from this, there are theorems which I can learn. There's Newton's law which I can learn. But nobody agreed for him to take admission in science. He was not one person who would stall there, who would stop there. Again, I'm talking about the spirit of being a human being. It's all about cherishing this human spirit. He acknowledged the spirit and he says, I am not an animal who will be herded in any way. He sued the government and he filed a case against the government and said, why there is no science education for blind people. For six months he fought the case and after six months the government agreed and said, we will have admissions for you in the science stream. Reluctantly, one small college took him in and then he hired a mentor who would record all the sessions and give him the recording which he would listen day in and day out. It went on for one and a half years because he had lost the first six months. After two years, for his 12th boards, when he gave his 12th boards, people asked him, how were the exams? He says, you will come to know the results. And he got 98% in his 12th examinations. That is being called cherishing the human spirit, a blind boy scoring 98%. But his challenges didn't end here. For this limitless spirit which was there, it had to be explored further. He realized that when he was filing the, the, the forms, filling the forms for IITs, it mentioned, it stated there, we have no such place for blind people. IITs cannot take in blind people. So don't give your competitive examinations. And he says in the video, he says, well, if I didn't, IIT didn't want me, I also didn't want IITs. And he said, let me look outside. And he applied abroad and the four best universities in the world, they offered him the seat in the college. And he took MIT in US. After four years, being the first international blind student in that college, he came out with flying colors. There were so many offers from the corporate houses. You join us, we'll take care of you, you'll make a career here. He decided, why not go back to India? Because what I suffered, being a bank venture, can I help other students not to suffer the same, in the same way. He came back, started an organization, built a platform where over a period of last so many years, almost 3,000 plus students have benefited from what he has made, education-wise, sports-wise, vocational courses-wise. What I'm saying to you is, if a blind boy could do it, it just reflects what it is to have a human spirit, what it is to cherish this human spirit. We can do a lot more than what we think we can do. I and mean, each one of us, we have the spirit of exploring that we can explore ourselves and ask ourselves, Kis cheez ke se ruke hue? And this boy, young boy called Srikanth, not only did he start this platform, he is one inspirational soul for people. I'm talking about him here and he's talking across the country. Almost 8 lakh people have been addressed by him. All 8 lakh youngsters who are fired up, who are inspired, who are saying we can go, we can do something bigger than what we are doing. He, he represents the country in the cricket. He represents the country in chess. He was with Dr. APJ on a lot of projects when Dr. APJ was alive. 
if he can do it, I think you and me, we can do a lot more. This is what it is called the human spirit.